Hi, my name is Bhupendra Singh and in this video we will be discussing about one of the most difficult concept that is a partition rule. So let me quickly uh, take you through the kind of question that we come across in this partition rule and uh, let me also take you through the conceptual part of it. We called it partition rule and this topic falls under the category of permutations and combinations. Now the question comes in a way for example if we have a linear equation in three variables a plus b plus c is equal to 8 and now there are two types of questions we may come across. The first type of question could be that how many positive integer solutions exist for this equation. So that's one type of question. The second type of question is how many non-negative integer solutions exist for this equation. So let me quickly give you the brief of what kind of questions we may come across when we are talking about this question. So here I have also uh, kept a question for, your, for our discussion. For example, if you have a question such as that there is a guy who purchases eight chocolates and there are three children among them, the eight chocolates have to be distributed. And the question says that every child must get at least one chocolate. Every child must get at least one chocolate out of eight then in how many ways can the chocolates be distributed considering all the chocolates are exactly identical and the first equation that we form is that a plus b plus c is equal to eight and now we have to divide this eight into three parts such that each part has a value starting minimum from one because we are looking for the positive integer solution right so uh, how I'm going to explain this, please watch it carefully. I'm quickly drawing these eight chocolates by means of these eight circles, seven and eight. Now I have to divide these three chocolate, these eight chocolates into three parts. So any group can be divided into three parts if there are two partitions placed anywhere like this. Now, so uh, because I can say that this part will be A, the middle part will be B, the third part will be C. And as soon as the partitions move, as soon as the partitions move, there will be different possible solutions of A, B and C. So now we have to quickly figure out in how many ways can we move these partitions, right? But since here we are talking about the total positive integer solutions, therefore this partition cannot be placed at this place because if partition goes here then the value of a becomes a zero because to the left of this partition there is no chocolate left. So all that we are left with is that we have to definitely place these partitions at these available gaps. Now how many gaps do we have? That is first thing we have to count. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven gaps and out of these seven gaps two gaps should be filled by these two partitions. So in how many ways can it be done? Then we have to answer it in 7C two ways because the total number of ways of, cho of choosing two uh, spaces out of seven available spaces for these two partitions will be 7C2. So that becomes the answer for this question. That means for the first question, if you calculate it, 7C2, 7C2 will be seven factorial divided by two factorial times five factorial, which becomes 21. So that's a positive integer solution for this particular question. Now, but we are going to structure it in a form of a formula. So let's understand why are we getting seven? We are getting seven spaces available because we have eight chocolates. Suppose if we had only five chocolates here, and if we had to place two partitions, then the number of spaces that we would have will be four. That means we understand that the number of spaces available will always be one less the total number of chocolates. That means if I say that the value of eight, the eight is represented by n, then I have to write n minus one, and the number of partitions will always be one less than the number of variables. That means since we have three variables, so we are putting two partitions. If we have to divide the number of chocolates into two parts, we have to place only one partition. So that becomes r minus one, assuming that all the variables, the count of variables is represented by r. So the formula for the positive integer solution turns out to be n minus one, c r minus one. 
So next time, if you come across a question that there are uh, 10 chocolates that have to be divided among four children and every child must get at least one chocolate, you will say that the answer is simply 10 minus 1, C 4 minus 1, that means 9, C 3. And you can simplify the value and answer the question. So that is one thing, how we generalize this principle. So let me quickly write it down. This is positive integer solution of this particular equation. Now the next question is to find out the non-negative integer solutions. So the non-negative integer solutions means the value of the variables can be anything from 0 to n. So now I am taking the same example once again a plus b plus c is equal to 8 where this condition is not essentially given that means the value of a, b and c may be 0 as well. So let's once again look at the same question from the similar perspective. So I'm drawing eight chocolates once again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And since I have to divide them into three parts, so once again, I have to place these two partitions. But now the way we have to answer this question has to be slightly changed. The thing is because this partition can come even at this space as well because if this partition comes here the value of a becomes a zero which now is considered acceptable and similarly this partition can go here even the two partitions can come together like this as well because in that case the value of b becomes a zero so eventually now we have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten ten uh, objects to to keep rotating among themselves. We have to arrange these 10 objects which can be done in 10 factorial ways. But since all the chocolates are identical, so we have to exclude their arrangement within themselves because if one chocolate gets replaced by 2 and 2 comes at one place, the arrangement, the representation, the answer does not change. So we have to divide it by 8 factorial because there are 8 chocolates here. Similarly, the two partitions are identical. If partition number 3 goes to place 8 and 8 goes to 3, then the division remains the same so we have to exclude the arrangement of the two partitions as well which can be done in two factorial ways if you look at this expression carefully that turns out to be 10 c uh, 10 c 2 or you can also write it as 10 c 8 but the thing is how do we formulate it see we have 10 objects because we have eight chocolates which i'm calling n the number of variables is three which we are calling r so we have n equal to 8, r is equal to 3. So it is 1 less than that. The reason is that the number of partitions we are using is always 1 less than r. Therefore, the formula is taking the shape of n plus r minus 1. C. Now, I'm looking at this part because this is a smaller number at the place of r. And I see that, see, we have uh, r equal to 3 and we have here 2. Right? If we had... Uh, the number of variables were 4 then we would have 3 here that means it would always be 1 less than the number of variables that we have so it becomes n plus r minus 1 c r minus 1 and this becomes a standard formula to find out the non-negative integer solutions of any linear equation so that's how we can summarize this principle so in this video, we learned two things. One, how to find out the positive integer solutions of any equation given in certain number of variables and how to find out the non-negative integer solutions of such an equation. Thank you so much for watching this video.